I've come all the way to Japan to cover the Tokyo Auto Show. Please click subscribe and then notifications. Domo arigatou gozaimashita. From the building, to the staffers, to the tchotchke, there's nothing quite like the Tokyo Motor Show. And oh yeah, there are cars too. Most you'll never see in the US. One of the world's majors and held every two years, it's a celebration of transportation. All kinds of it. I'm going to do my best to show you everything that's cool here, but uh, I'm one guy with a camera, and this is a huge show. The great thing about this show is for car guys, there's a squirrel moment everywhere you look. Let's start with two cars from a brand you won't see in Kansas, Dorothy. The Renault Letitia enters its fifth generation. It's the Clio everywhere else. I actually drove the fourth generation in Slovenia. An available E-Tech hybrid powertrain combines a 1.6 liter gas engine with two electric motors and a 1.2 kilowatt hour battery. It has a transmission, so it's not the same as Nissan's e-power system. Oddly, Next door, the Alpine A110S. It's the performance edition of the A110 that few people in the States even know about. Its aluminum body structure gets carbon fiber pieces to lighten things up. The 1.8 liter four cylinder is bumped to 288 horsepower. Power is routed to the back tires via a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Move to Japan or Europe if you want one. The Honda Fit is one of the few production cars unveiled here. It comes in a number of models, including one for people who like to work out, I suppose. The interior is the best part about it, upscale for an entry-level car. The less busy exterior is on the plain side. Don't get too excited about seeing it in the US just yet. American Honda hasn't fully committed to it. A powertrain option uses a smaller version of the company's hybrid system where two electric motors replace the transmission. Tokyo Auto Show is known for having lots of concepts and this year there were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of them. Suzuki had some pretty interesting stuff. Looking like a really big Bang & Olufsen camping cooler, the Hanare is described as an autonomous mobile family room, or maybe a mechanical push-me-pull-you. Great design, but uh, that big screen is not ideal for viewing angle. It also showed the Waku SPO, a two-door plug-in hybrid concept that transforms from coupe to wagon, uh, just what we all need. And the front fascia can change when you want to go incognito. A version of Suzuki's every van is called the Go Anywhere Baby Room. Uh, don't expect this, even if you're expecting. It's a concept, one that's perfect for babies, designed for breastfeeding privacy and changing diapers in the shade, even if it's twins. Kawaii, uh, that's Japanese for cute. Speaking of, Dahatsu, a division of Toyota, cornered the market on Adorable with three of my favorite concepts. The YY is a tiny minivan convertible that's as sleek as a box can be, like a VW microbus that's truly micro. This would be a blast for families on a nice sunny day. It seats six, if you have no luggage, and in yellow would be a dead ringer for Pikachu. The Waku Waku might be a tiny sport utility, but it has some big ideas that would be very useful. It's equipped with all sorts of storage cubbies and a split hatch that's either a bench or step, and there's a built-in roof compartment. In both design and color, it's a winner. Think of it as a Toyota FJ Cruiser left in the dryer way too long. It could go up against the Suzuki Jimny, a production vehicle that's very popular in Japan. Finally, the Dahatsu Tsumi Tsumi. It's a perfect city truck to run chores in, and no, it doesn't fly. This is a huge drone. Remember, these are concepts. Other modules, like a camping topper, could be put on top. But it's the doors on this trucklet that are the star of the show. They're maximized for each side. If you look at it for a while, you'll see that they're different. Like many of these kinds of K-trucks that roam Japan, the seats fold flat for maximum cargo flexibility. Have to believe something larger like this in America would absolutely slay. 
More concepts. Uh, surely you don't think this Mitsubishi is a production vehicle, do you? Cross a Miata with a Jeep Wrangler and you get the MyTech. It's a two-seater with a gas turbine engine that runs a generator and it's a plug-in hybrid with an electric motor at each wheel that allows it to U-turn on a dime. It was a huge hit at the show. Expected to see it in production trim. Uh, never. Its second concept car is a K-Truck, the Super Height K-Wagon. Its name is as big as its ambition with flexible seating that, once again, I have to believe Americans would love to have. It's just too small for our tastes. And with a 63-horsepower, turbocharged, 660cc three-cylinder engine, a bit sleepy in the performance department. Nissan showed off two very attractive concepts, the IMK City Car and the Aria Fastback Crossover. Both are theoretically EVs if they were to be produced, and these days Nissan tends to suggest coming product with its concepts. This show car shows the future horizon of Nissan design aspect as a brand and as a design language. Uh, we wanted to create a simple, clean gesture, almost a new horizon folded across the, the whole car. I did a whole piece on them since Nissan brought me to the show. Check out my channel. <laughs> I told you there were a lot of concepts. Subaru showed off a sneak of the second generation Lavorg, which should be very close to the production version. Simply because this is a station wagon, I doubt it will show up on American roads, but there are rumors that the grill is a dead ringer for the upcoming STI. I saw a fair number of first gen Lavorgs in Japan. Apparently, resistance is futile. And in the shadow of this wagon is the Visiv Adrenaline concept that was first shown off in Geneva. Anyone see a tougher looking Crosstrek here? It employs the company's new design language called Boulder. If nothing else, it should inspire aftermarket body panel makers to fill the void. And as long as I'm in the Subi booth, let's all say goodbye to the giant wing, gold wheels, and blue paint of the WRX STI. This is its final edition. Back to more concepts. The Mercedes-Benz EQS is art that should be on a pedestal. It's an electric S-Class from the future. Yeah, all eyes are drawn to the Tron-like lines, but you could stare at it for hours and still find small details popping up. This thing is just stunning in person. It draws you in. Would love to see a production version, though it would be hard to pull something off just like this. If the wedge is your favorite shape, feast your eyes on the Lexus LF30. It has a four-motor drivetrain. Yes, the company that doesn't have an EV is hinting that it might be considering one. The battery is solid state because so why not in a concept? And it charges wirelessly. This is one sharp vehicle, one you don't have to touch since many of its functions use gesture controls. And it's autonomous too because, well, all cars in the future are supposed to be, right? One of the big focuses at the show, electrification. It was a huge topic at the show. This pampered Mazda is the company's first EV, the MX-30. It's not a concept, begging the question, why do automakers feel the need to take electric vehicles out of the mainstream? Why doors like this? They're not very practical. A fastback crossover, it's good looking. The battery pack is a 35.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion unit. Can't tell you with any accuracy about range, performance, or charging times yet. Apparently, it's possible for Mazda to add a range extender, maybe a rotary engine. Live in Europe? You can pre-order it now. Americans will have to wait at least a year. Honda had the Honda E on hand. This will be available in Europe and Japan, but not in America. And that's probably a good move because I think our market wants more than a range of some 137 miles from the 35.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. The styling looks a lot like the offspring of the first generation Civic and the robot Eve from the movie WALL-E, at least in white. But again, think back to all of the concepts. Nearly everyone was either full EV or hybrid. It's what the automakers are focusing on going forward. Toyota didn't show any production vehicles at the show when I was there, but apparently there's a new Yaris. It had a store and a very cool dance show with performers jumping off trampolines that I couldn't get anywhere close to. And maybe it's getting into the roller skate business. It kind of looks that way. 
it did have a bunch of concepts. This one is an autonomous vehicle that can be a mobile gym, though I'm not sure how you work out wearing a seatbelt. I could do this in a regular car. Or it can be a mobile makeup room or closet in case you can't decide on what to wear to the club. Do people want this? Asked the guy who only wears Levi's 501s. It also had the E-Racer, a tandem two-seater. Uh, could be fun. I hear Akio Toyota loves the idea of it. Not sure what would power it or where a drivetrain would go. And are these thrusters or cameras? Trucks, uh, that scene is very different here in Japan. They don't do F-150s and Ram pickups like we do in America. I looked around and didn't find a single one, big or small. This market is more into vans, which is not a bad thing. Payloads stay dry and secure. Vans are very popular here, often pressed into limo use. Most of the trucks on display here were commercial. I really want to see this Isuzu on the road in the US. Think how nasty it would look filling a rear view mirror. And lighting is a big deal. Seems like a future trend. Uh, time to take a break. I know I'm not going to get any sympathy. Tokyo is one of the world's greatest cities, but covering this show is hard. Uh, let me show you a little bit of what it's like. You have to look really close to see this reveal or insult to injury. This guy walked in front of a bunch of us at the very wrong moment. To get a clear shot, many outlets have a number of crews allowing them to queue up at least an hour before reveals in order to get a space on the riser so there's a decent chance at clean video. And even then, it's hard to jockey for position, so the photographers get creative. It gets laughable at times. I was trying to get the reveal of the Honda Fit. Here's my attempt. I couldn't get any closer than 50 yards away. I was holding my closed tripod up over my head to get this lousy shot. It's a photographer's code to never walk in front of another's camera lens, but here uh, there are just so many it's a losing battle, though there are a lot of clueless shooters here. See? It happens all the time. People aren't paying attention. I'll admit I did this a couple times myself. Hard to avoid. The Tokyo Big Sight venue is massive. My Apple Watch recorded eight miles of walking, and that's with gear. Good thing there was lots of food and coffee around. A few odds and ends before I wrap things up. I got my first look at the Mazda CX-30 in person. It's a small crossover that replaces the CX-3, and I think the new one will be far more successful in the US. It has a more mature look, the materials are better, and it seems roomier. Keep an eye out for it. Think the Miata is tiny? The Dahatsu Kopen with its retractable hardtop is even smaller. Uh, good thing because its 660cc engine produces only 63 horsepower. At least it can be had with a manual transmission, a 5-speed. Super cute, but super small for most American guys. I know that the tiny K cars would never make it in the US, but is there no company looking at the amazing utility of these things and thinking of making a larger version? Every time I see one, it makes me smile. The creativity is amazing. I believe automakers in the US are leaving money on the table. And got to love the name, Hustler. Yes, there are exotics at the show, but nothing really new. BMW's Alpina has a much larger lineup in Japan than it does in the US. The only American brand I saw here was Tesla at a very small booth. I really don't think this counts. Hey, Mitsubishi, why are you selling the Mirage in the US when we could have the EKX? It has a lot more personality and practicality. Uh, give it some thought, okay? And as long as I'm in the booth, I can't resist using the line, Hey, Humperdinck, have you seen the Engelberg? It's a plug-in hybrid crossover with a built-in rocket box. Not sure who this guy is, but he's well-dressed and seems to be pretty happy about being around the Lavorg. I'm guessing he's sponsored by Subaru. A reminder that Nissan brought me here to Japan. Manufacturers like Honda and Toyota bring riders in and give them easier and deeper access so we don't always have to face the crush I showed you earlier. Or maybe this guy's just a model. Uh, anyways, Nissan gave me a look at what it's going to produce in the coming years. Check that story out on my channel. Finally, I had no time to shop for souvenirs. I really wanted to buy one of these jackets off a worker. I'm pretty wild. Much easier than getting a Honda N-Van in my suitcase. 
And between jet lag and working 18 hours a day, please excuse me for calling this the Tokyo Auto Show and not the Tokyo Motor Show, like I'm about to do again. All right, that's all I can get to uh, besides my feet hurt. It's been quite a day. Hope you got something out of my look at the 2019 Tokyo Auto Show. And a reminder, click subscribe and then notifications so I can keep doing coverage like this. It's a win situation for all of us. From Tokyo, I'm Tom Bolton.